In this video, I'm going to be upgrading the VRAM or video memory on this NVIDIA GeForce GT640 video card. Now normally this upgrade is not worth doing on most video cards, however in this instance it is for a very specific reason. So a friend of mine purchased this card off eBay for use in an Apple XServe and they, he wanted me to flash a Mac ROM onto the card. Now unfortunately the only Mac ROM I could find for the GT640 was for a 2GB VRAM model. Now what he ended up getting uh, is a 1GB VRAM model as you can see on that sticker right there and of course you cannot flash a ROM for a 2GB card onto a 1GB card because it will tell the system that the card has 2GB of video memory installed. Now I would, I originally attempted to modify the video BIOS to uh, only detect one gigabyte of video memory, um, but unfortunately that ended up being something I wasn't able to do. Um, I didn't really look into it that much, but I suppose with a little bit more research I could have figured it out, but I figured it'll be more fun just to upgrade the video memory on this card and then flash that two gigabyte Mac video BIOS onto it. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and install this card into my Mac Pro so I can go ahead and show you that the uh, installed video memory size is indeed one gigabyte. And then we're gonna go ahead and begin the process with of upgrading the video, the video memory on this video card. Now I actually did get some video memory off uh, eBay from a seller in China uh, that was the correct um, type and uh, size to upgrade this card to two gigabytes of video memory. Um, but before I show you any of that, I'm gonna go ahead and install it like I said and show you that only one gigabyte of video memory is currently installed. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the GT640 installed in the Mac Pro, and I've actually gone ahead and booted a copy of Windows on there so we can take a look at some information about the card. So as you can see here, I've gotten a copy of Windows booted and I've opened um, GPU-Z so we can see a little bit of info about the card. So as you can see here for memory type, um, this is GDDR3 memory that's installed on this card, and the memory size is one gigabyte, as I mentioned earlier. So as you can see, um, everything is running. Um, we've got arrow enabled, so the driver is working properly, and uh, everything is detected correctly. Um, so the memory I got for this card is GDDR3 rated memory. Um, like I said, I did ensure that the memory I got was the exact correct type for this specific card. Um, except instead of being one gigabyte, it'll total out to being two gigabytes. Um, so as you can see, like I said, it is detected only one gigabyte of video memory, and we will now begin the process of upgrading the video memory on this card. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is shut this machine down, uh, remove the card, uh, remove the uh, heat sink off of it, and get it on the board preheater and prepare to remove the original video memory chips. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set up on the board preheater and then resume the video. All right, so as you can see here, I've gotten the heat sink removed from the card and I've also gone ahead and removed the uh, PCIe bracket uh, for the back of it here, um, just so I could remove everything possible before heating the card. Um, so here is the VRAM that's currently installed. As you can see, it is Samsung X4W1G16466, I believe, or 6G, um, and that those are one gigabit chips. So you add up all eight of these, there's eight of them on the board, um, you get eight gigabit, which is one gigabyte. So that ends up being the one gigabyte of VRAM. Um, and these are the new chips I got. As you can see, they're actually Micron branded chips, um, but they are the exact same spec as the ones on the board other than being two gigabit instead of one gigabit. So you put all eight of these on there. Actually, there's 10 in this. I had to order 10. Um, you should always get extra chips when you're doing something like this. Um, but you put eight of these on here and uh, you should end up with a total of 16 gigabit or two gigabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and begin the process uh, before actually getting this card up to temperature. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is get eight of these chips out here and get some flux on the bottom of them and prepare them to be soldered onto this board. Um, that way, once I get this board heating, we can just go through, remove all eight, and then solder all eight of these on in place of them. Um, and it should be a pretty quick process doing it that way. 
Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is get the camera and the tripod and then I'll go through and prepare uh, these with a little bit of flux and some heat and uh, then we'll have those ready to install uh, once we get this card heated up and all these chips removed. All right, so in order to prepare the chips for installation, all we're gonna do is apply some flux to each one, and then we're gonna heat it with this board preheater here to melt the flux uh, around the chip, so that way um, it all flows nicely. Um, and you don't need too much on there, just a little bit. All right, and then once you get the flux installed, you just want to take each chip, um, pick it up with a pair of tweezers, and just heat it and get the flux to flow all over the uh, solder balls. So you can see there it gets liquid, and you just rock it back and forth. And as you can see, there's now completely, all the solder balls are completely covered with flux. So we'll just go ahead and keep doing those with the rest of the eight chips, and then they'll be ready for installation. Okay, so as you can see there, we have completed uh, applying flux to all eight chips. So now we are ready to begin the process of heating the GPU up on the board preheater and desoldering the original chips. Now I will warn you ahead of time, uh, the board preheater is quite noisy, has a small fan that is very loud and annoying, but um, fortunately there's really nothing I can do about that. So um, yeah, just be prepared for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that uh, GPU on the board per heater and begin getting it up to temperature. All right, so I've gone ahead and gotten the board per heater fully up to temperature. Um, right now I have it set to about 150 degrees Celsius, uh, which should be more than enough to uh, preheat this uh, thin of a board. Um, and on the top heat, I'm gonna be using the hot air nozzle uh, set to around 300 degrees Celsius. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and start by applying flux to each one of these chips, and then we'll begin the process of desoldering them. Alright, so now that I've gotten flux applied to each one, I'm just going to go around with the hot air nozzle here. Um, as you can see, I'm just using uh, the hot air thing itself with no nozzle on the end of it. Um, that's all you need to do for these larger chips. So I'm going to go around and desolder them all, and then we'll begin the process of cleaning the pads and installing the new chips. All right, so as you can see, I've gotten all the chips removed. And uh, one thing you might have noticed is I accidentally hit this little resistor right here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get that resoldered into the correct spot. And then we'll begin the process of cleaning the residual solder off the rest of the pads. All right, I've gone ahead and fixed that little resistor. Um, so now all we're gonna do is start by applying some fresh leaded solder to the pads. And then from there, we can go ahead and wick all the solder off the board.
All right, so that looks pretty good. We've got all the residual solder removed. And I, like I said, I fixed uh, that resistor there. Um, so just if you ever do this, make sure you don't hit any uh, of the little passive components. But uh, sometimes it's hard to avoid, as you can see. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the old flux uh, wiped off the board just using some rubbing alcohol and paper towels. And then we can begin the process of preparing the board to install the new chips. Alright, so as you can see, I've gotten most of the residual flux removed. So now we'll go ahead and apply some fresh flux to each pad, or each section here. And then once you've got a layer of flux applied, you want to wipe off uh, some excess because you don't want too much on there. Okay, so that should be about good. So now what we're going to do is just go ahead and take our new chips and place them into their spots. Of course, it doesn't, it doesn't matter which chip goes where as long as uh, pin 1 is aligned on each one appropriately and luckily this card has a silk screen outline around each one it makes it quite easy to get aligned correctly Alright, so now that I've gotten all the chips in their general correct position, I'm just going to go back through them one more time using a flashlight and make sure they are perfectly aligned uh, to the silk screen outline. Alright, so those are looking pretty darn good there. And remember, you don't have to be 100% exact with these. It's just as long as you're within a specific, you know, amount. They do have some room for error because they will, like, uh, float into their correct positions when you heat them and the solder starts to melt. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the board preheater here, or the uh, hot air once again. And then we're going to go through and just heat all of these until they're soldered to the board. Alrighty, so there we go. All the chips are fully seated, and uh, all you want to look for when you solder those is that the uh, balls uh, turn shiny and then the chip drops slightly, and that will indicate uh, that the uh, solder has melted fully and is soldered correctly. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the board preheater, turn off the hot air, and get everything cooled down, and then we can go ahead and give it a test. So once everything gets cooled down, I will go ahead and resume the video and we'll perform the initial test. Alright, so as you can see, I've gotten everything cooled down. You can see the Micron video memory is now installed onto the board. And you can see that I, I did clean a little bit of the flux off, but I left most of it on because I will be uh, ultrasonicing this board after we're done. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get this heatsink installed. I'll of course, apply some fresh thermal paste to the GPU and then we'll be able to test the board and see how it works. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, C or the uh, GPU heatsink installed and we'll go ahead and give it a test. Alright, so as you can see here I've gotten the uh, heatsink reinstalled, uh, gotten the fan plugged in and of course I applied some fresh thermal paste to the card. So now we can go ahead and fire up the machine and see if it works. Now remember, this still has the original BIOS on there, um, so it is still going to report having one gigabyte of video memory. However, I just want to test it, make sure it boots, uh, make sure the NVIDIA driver can load properly, and uh, once that 
Once I verify that's the case, we'll go ahead and flash the 2GB Mac compatible ROM onto the card. And the Mac Pro did chime. I do have a Windows drive set to be the startup disk, so we'll go ahead and see if we get some video. And look at that. We've got the GeForce GT640 BIOS initializing, um, and it looks like Windows is booting. Yep, Windows is now booting on the machine, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, let Windows boot up, and we'll test everything, make sure it all works. Alrighty, so as you can see, Windows successfully booted. Um, you can see we do have the Arrow theme fully enabled, so the driver is working correctly. Um, but as you can see here, uh, GPU's D still says it has one gig of video memory installed, just as I explained. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is flash that two gigabyte Mac ROM onto the card, and then that should allow us to use the full two gigabytes of VRAM we just installed onto the card. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of GPU-Z, and we're going to use NVFlash uh, for Windows to flash the Mac ROM. Now this is not going to be a tutorial of how to flash the card, uh, but basically I'm just going to be running this NVFlash command to flash the Mac ROM onto the card. So go ahead and run that now. And it wants us to confirm a PCI subsystem ID override. We'll do that. Confirm that. And as you can see, the ROM is now being flashed. So this does take a little bit to complete, so we'll go ahead and wait for that to finish. All right, so as you can see, the update was completed successfully. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is just restart the machine. Now in theory, if this does work correctly, we should have a boot screen now, since it is a Mac compatible ROM, and GPU-Z as well as the OS should now detect two gigabytes of video memory. And as you can see, the boot screen is now working correctly. So let's just go ahead and let it boot up into Windows and we'll check out uh, the information. So as you can see, it's doing exactly what it did before when we first booted it. So we'll go ahead and wait for it to boot and I will show you GPU-Z and we'll see what it says. All right, so as you can see now, I've gotten GPU-Z open. Windows has booted again successfully. Um, Arrow is working, driver's loaded, but now you can see that it detects 2048 megabytes, or of course, two gigabytes of video memory. So that has been the successful upgrade. Everything seems to be working. Um, so the last test I'm gonna do is just reboot this machine back into OS 10, and we'll go ahead and take a look at it there. Um, and just so you can see, uh, this is the GPU-Z on the machine, and the same exact video card we just flashed is installed and working properly. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this machine back into OS 10. We'll go and check in there and see how it looks and uh, make sure everything's working properly. Alrighty, so as you can see, I booted the machine into OS 10. You can see that the NVIDIA GeForce GT640 with two gigs of video memory is detected. And you can also see it is detected correctly in System Profiler over here. So, everything seems to be working fine. I've already done a bit of testing with some animations and whatnot. And uh, I can just show you that now. You can see that the OS X animations work as intended. You can see that the uh, Launchpad folder opens just fine. Um, and that is pretty GPU intensive. So um, I will stress test this further, but um, as far as I'm concerned, it seems to be working just fine. We've got two gigs of video memory installed and the correct ROM flashed. So that has been the successful upgrade of this NVIDIA GeForce GT640 video card from one gigabyte to two gigabytes of video memory. Hope you enjoyed this video.